This video introduces the idea of parametric equations. Instead of describing a curve as y equals f of x, we can describe the x-coordinates and y-coordinates separately in terms of a third variable, t, usually thought of as time. So we can write x as a function of t and y as a separate function of t. This is especially useful as a way to describe curves that don't satisfy the vertical line test and therefore can't be described traditionally as functions of y in terms of x. A Cartesian equation for a curve is an equation in terms of x and y only. Parametric equations for a curve give both x and y as functions of a third variable, usually t. The third variable is called the parameter. As our first example, let's graph the parametric equations given here on an x-y coordinate axis. We'll do this by finding x and y coordinates that correspond to the same value of t. For example, when t is negative 2, you can calculate that x, by plugging in negative 2 for t, gives you 5, and y, when you plug in negative 2 for t, gives you 8. Please pause the video for a moment and fill in some additional values of x and y for some additional values of t. Your chart should look like this, and when we plot the x-y pairs and connect the dots, we get something like this. Notice that this point over here corresponds to a t value of negative 2, and this point over here corresponds to the t value of 2. So if we think of t as time, we're traversing the curve in this direction. To find a Cartesian equation for this curve, we need to eliminate the variable t from these equations. One way to do this is to solve for t in one equation, say the first equation. So 2t is equal to 1 minus x, which means that t is 1 half minus x over 2. Then we can plug that expression for t into the second equation and get y equals 1 half minus x over 2 squared plus 4, which simplifies to the quadratic equation y equals 1 fourth x squared minus 1 half x plus 17 fourths. Let's try some more examples. A table of values for the first example helps us draw the familiar graph of a circle of radius 1. This should come as no surprise, since the equations x equals cosine t and y equals sine t are familiar from trig as a way of describing the x and y coordinates of a point on the unit circle. Notice that when t equals 0, our curve lies on the positive x-axis, and as t increases from 0 to 2 pi, we traverse the curve once in the counterclockwise direction. A Cartesian equation for this unit circle is given by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. This follows from the trig identity cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1 by substituting in x for cosine t and y for sine t. Please pause the video for a moment to graph the second curve and rewrite it as a Cartesian equation. A table of values should help you see that the graph is again a unit circle, but this time as t increases from 0 to 2 pi, we actually traverse the circle twice in the clockwise direction. I'll draw this with a double arrow moving clockwise. The Cartesian equation for this graph is still x squared plus y squared equals 1. And so we found two different parameterizations for the same graph on the x-y axis. Let's take a look at the third equation. There's no interval of value specified for t here, so let's just assume that t can be any real number. Now as t ranges from negative infinity to infinity, our y values, which are given by cosine t, oscillate between 1 and negative 1. 
our x values are always the square of our y values. So the graph of this curve has to lie on the graph of x equals y squared, which is a sideways parabola. But our parametrically defined curve doesn't cover this whole parabola. Remember that y is given by cosine of t, so y can only range between negative 1 and 1. And so we're only getting the portion of the parabola that I shade in here. As t varies from, say, 0 to pi, I traverse this parabola one time. And then as t goes from pi to 2 pi, I go back again in the other direction. And as t continues to increase, I traverse this parabola infinitely many times. The Cartesian equation for this curve is the equation x equals y squared with the restriction that y is between negative 1 and 1. We've seen several examples where we went from parametric equations to Cartesian equations. Now let's start with a Cartesian equation and rewrite it as a parametric equation. In this example, y is already given as a function of x. So an easy way to parameterize this curve is to just let x equal t and then y is equal to the square root of t squared minus t, substituting in t for x. The domain restriction in terms of x just translates into a restriction in terms of t. I call this the copycat parameterization. Since we've successfully introduced the new variable t, but t just copies whatever x does. In the second example, we could try setting x equal to t. Then we get 25t squared plus 36y squared is equal to 900. And solving for y, we'd have y squared equals 900 minus 25t squared over 36. So y is plus or minus the square root of this quantity. This is a very awkward looking expression. In fact, y is not even a function of t here because of the plus and minus signs. So let's look for a better way to parameterize this curve. Because of the x squared and the y squared, this equation is a good candidate for parameterizing using sine and cosine. In fact, if we divide both sides of the equation by 900, we get 25x squared over 900 plus 36y squared over 900 is equal to 1, which simplifies to x squared over 36 plus y squared over 25 is equal to 1. If I rewrite this as x over 6 squared plus y over 5 squared equals 1, then I can set x over 6 equal to cosine of t and y over 5 equal to sine of t. And I can see that for any value of t, x over 6 and y over 5 will satisfy this equation simply because cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. This gives me the parameterization x equals 6 cosine of t y equals 5 sine of t, which is a handy way to describe an ellipse. As a final example, let's describe a general circle of radius r and center hk. For any point x, y on the circle, we know that the distance from that point x, y to the center of the circle is equal to r. So using the distance formula, we know that the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared has to equal r. Squaring both sides, this gives us the equation for the circle in Cartesian coordinates. So for example, if our circle has radius 5 and has center at the point negative 3, 17, then its equation would be x minus negative 3, that's x plus 3, squared plus y minus 17 squared is equal to 25. One way to find the equation of a general circle in parametric equations is to start with the unit circle 
and work our way up. We know that the unit circle, with radius 1 centered at the origin, is given by the equation x equals cosine t and y equals sine t. If we want a circle of radius r centered around the origin instead, then we need to expand everything by a factor of r. So we multiply our x and y coordinates by r. If we now want the center to be at hk instead of at the origin, then we need to add h to all our x coordinates and add k to all our y coordinates. This gives us the general equation for a circle in parametric equations to match the Cartesian equation above. We can write our same example circle in parametric equations as x equals 5 cosine t minus 3, y equals 5 sine t plus 17. In this video, we translated back and forth in between Cartesian equations and parametric equations, with a special emphasis on the equations for circles.